Call the meeting to order of the Waterloo Board of Adjustment. It's a regular meeting for September 24th. Uh, do I have an approval of the agenda? Any additions or corrections? Move to accept the agenda. Oh, no. Uh, yeah, a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, uh, any addition or correction to the August 27th minutes? I do have one addition that I want to make to item number eight on page six and seven. We had specifically required in that uh, approval that the engineer had to place a letter in file stating that the side, the thickness of the asphalt was acceptable. Yes. And, and that's not in part, and that's not in the write up at all. Or at least I maybe I talks did. about it, but it doesn't say that was a requirement of the motion. Oh, you want it in the motion. Gotcha. Okay. I will add that. Has it happened? Did we get that letter? Uh, Jamie's actually supposed to get that to me probably yet today or tomorrow. Any other additions or corrections? No. Okay. Accept a, a motion and for approval. So moved. Yeah. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, we have four discussion items, decision items, I should say. Uh, first one is a request by Shiloh Baptist Church for a special permit and variance to expand a legal non-conforming use to allow for the construction of a 24 by 36 pole building in an A1 agriculture district located at 3525 Sager Avenue. Staff report. This is Western with staff. The request would not appear to have a negative impact on the surrounding area uh, as the adjacent apartment complex has a row of garages between the complex and the proposed building that would act as a screening. Uh, the proposed request would not appear to have a negative impact on vehicular traffic in the area. Ac access to the site is from Sager Avenue, which is classified as a local street. Uh, the property in question is zone A1 agricultural district and has been zoned as such since the adoption of the ordinance. To the north of the site is uh, R3 multiple residence district and C2 commercial district. To the south is A1 agricultural district. Uh, to the east is R2 one and two family residence district. To the west is R4 multiple family residence district. Uh, the area to the north is an apartment complex, uh, Ferguson plumbing and Young's plumbing and heating. To the south are our Memorial Stadium and Central Intermediate School. To the east is a single family, our single family homes along the east side of Katowski Drive. Uh, to the west, there are apartment complexes, North Star Community Services and Miriam's Park. Uh, there are two existing 120 square foot and a 110 square foot shed built in 1980 and 1995 at the southwest corner of the parking lot that will be removed and the proposed building with vinyl siding would be built in their place. The applicant indicated that the proposed building will be used for storage of mowing equipment and various other items needed for the church. Uh, the zoning ordinance requires that religious institutions obtain a special permit issued by the Board of Adjustment after a recommendation from the Planning and Zoning Commission. This is due in part to its ability to be developed in many zoning classifications as well as the impacts such as such a development can have on other public infrastructure, such as traffic, sewer, et cetera. In addition, religious institutions are not listed as a permitted use, are not permitted uses in the A1 agricultural district. Therefore, the applicant is also requesting a variance to expand a non-conforming use for a religious institution in the A1 agricultural district to construct the proposed pole building. At the September 10th, 2019 Planning and Zoning Commission meeting, the commission unanimously recommended approval of the request as submitted. Uh, therefore, the request by Shiloh Baptist Church for a special permit and a variance to expand a legal non-conforming use to construct a 24 by 36 or 860 square foot storage building with vinyl siding within an A1 agricultural district located at 3525 Sager Avenue, 
uh, be approved for the following reasons. The request would be in conformance with the comprehensive plan and future land use map for this area. The request would not appear to have a negative impact on the surrounding area. The request would not appear to have a negative impact on pedestrian or vehicular traffic conditions in the area and following to and with the following conditions that the final site plan meets all applicable city codes, regulations, etc., including but not limited to parking, landscaping, screening, drainage, etc., except as approved by the Board of Adjustment. Okay. Um, I have a question is is there a reason why we didn't why you didn't recommend in your request that they take down the two buildings since they said they were going to? Um, no, I guess the applicant just stated they were too far gone. They weren't repairable. They, they were going to remove them regardless. But we can add that as a condition. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah, April. Okay, is there anybody in the audience wish to speak in favor of the request? Okay, if you come up and uh, state your name and address. My name is Rick Mott. I'm part of Shiloh Baptist Church, and I'm here if you need any questions answered. And the two sheds that are there are going away because the building would sit right where they're sitting. So oh, okay. the building's going to basically be over top of where the sheds are sitting. So they're they're going away. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you. <clears throat> Anyone else? Is there anyone in the audience wish to speak against the request? Okay. Seeing none, I guess I would entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to request um, to approve the request by the Shiloh Baptist Church for a special permit and variance to expand a legal non-conforming use to construct a 24 by 36 or 864 square foot storage building with final siding within an A1 agricultural district located at 3525 Sager Avenue for the following reasons. The request would not would be in conformance with a comprehensive plan and future land use map for this area. The request would not appear to have a negative impact on the surrounding area. The request would not appear to have a negative impact on pedestrian or vehicular traffic conditions in the area. And with the following two conditions. One, the final site plan needs to meet all applicable city codes, regulations, etc., including but not limited to parking, landscaping, screening, drainage, etc., except as approved by the Board of Adjustment and removing the old buildings. I'll second that. Probably should say storage buildings. Storage, removing the old storage buildings, that's, yes. That's, they probably don't want to cheer, tear down the church. No, they don't. <laughs> I'm sure not. I, I'll still second it. Okay. Any further questions or comments? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Your motion is carried. Second request by signs by tomorrow for a sign variance to allow for the installation of two 17 square foot wall mounted signs. Okay. Is there two 17 square foot? Is that? Okay. The addition, installation of two 17 square foot wall mounted signs and a 21 square foot wall mounted sign for a total of 55 square feet, 44.4 square feet more than the 10 point square feet in an R2, R4 multifamily district located at 128 Plaza Circle. Staff report. This is Western with staff. The property owner recently built a new office building at the dead end of Plaza Circle and are requesting a sign variance to allow for the installation of two 17 square foot wall mounted signs and a 21 square foot wall mounted sign for a total of 55 square feet, 44.4 square feet more than a 10.6 square feet allowed in the R4 multiple residence district. 
Uh, the, per the request would not appear to have a negative impact on the neighborhood as the property in question is mostly surrounded by commercial and multifamily uses. The property in question is accessed from West Ridgeway Avenue, which is classified as a major arterial road via Plaza Circle that is classified as a local road. The request would not appear to have a negative impact on traffic conditions in the area as there are several other businesses that have existed since the mid 1970s uh, to 19 to the early 1980s along Plaza Circle without any known traffic issues. The proposed signs would be in conformance with the classification of this area as mixed residential, low, medium, high residential, professional offices, and neighborhood commercial on the future land use map within the city of Waterloo. Loose comprehensive plan adopted February 3rd, 2003. Now, the zoning ordinance allows wall signs on one, on no more than two walls or monument signs not exceeding 12 feet in height with total area of all signage not to exceed one square foot for each five feet of street frontage with a maximum of 64 square feet on any one side of total monument signs and not more than two sides uh, shall be used for advertising purposes when accessory and customarily incidental to a principal permitted use on the property excluding one and two family residence districts. The property owner recently uh, completed the construction of a 3,600 square foot office building costing approximately $400,000 that will house Huff Counseling Services, which consists of eight service organizations. The property in question is unique in that it only has approximately 50 feet of frontage which limits the property to 10 square feet of signage. The applicant has stated that a 10 square foot, uh, 10 foot, 10 square foot sign is too small to be able to list all eight agencies and is seeking the variance to be able to install additional signage so that the patrons are able to locate the various agencies within the building. The proposed sign are, uh, signs are not lighted and would not be visible to residential homes to the west. Uh, there appears to be a lack of reasonable return as the properties uh, narrow frontage severely limits the ability to provide adequate signage for the agencies located within the new building and denial of the request could deny the owner reasonable use of the property. Uh, uniqueness, there would appear to be some uniqueness to the request as the new building sits approximately 232 feet south of West Ridgeway Avenue at the dead end uh, of Plaza Circle, severely limiting its visibility to potential clients and the lack of street frontage severely limits the amount of adequate wall signage to effectively direct clients to the businesses. Public considerations, the request would not appear to have a negative impact on the area, but would be compatible with surrounding uses and is an excellent example of infill development. And also staff has heard no objection, objections to the request. Therefore, staff recommends approval of the request by signs by tomorrow for a sign variance to allow for the installation of two 17 square feet wall mounted signs and a 21 square feet wall mounted sign for a total of 55 square feet, 44.4 square feet, more than the 10.6 square feet allowed in the R4 multiple family residence district located at 128 Plaza Circle be approved for the following reasons. There appears to be a lack of reasonable return as the property's narrow frontage severely limits the ability to provide adequate signage for the agencies located within the new building and denial of the request um, could deny the owner reasonable use of the property. Uh, also, there would appear to be some uniqueness to the request as the new building sits approximately 232 feet south of West Widray Avenue at the dead end of Plaza Circle, severely limiting its visibility to potential clients and the lack of street furniture severely limits the amount of adequate wall signage to effectively direct clients to the various agencies. Also, the request would not appear to have negative impact on the area, but would be compatible with surrounding uses and would appear to be a compatible infill development project. And lastly, staff has heard no objections to the requests. Okay. I just have a quick question for clarification. The reason why I was a little confused is there is already a sign up there that on the new sign, one of the new signs, so it was not in compliance, the one that's put up there right now, correct? Yeah, there was a, an existing sign they're just going to reface. Um, I'm not sure what size that sign was actually, so I can't really say if that was out of compliance. I would imagine it would be. 
Okay. It's 17 square feet. So yeah, it probably would have been. Just so I understand, there's a, a sign on this new building already? Yes. Okay. The, um, the one that's over the door, it says Counseling Consulting Wellness Center. That sign is there. Questions for anybody from? No. Any other questions of well, staff? If this building is really deep, but in order to hold this many business, I assume it's deep, but yes. it's going to have a big frontage. Okay. Right. Yeah, you can barely see it from the street. This, it's really be looking to see it from Ridgeway, see the building from Ridgeway. And the signs will actually face north. Yes. Towards Ridgeway. Right. Yes. But it's behind. Yeah, it's I'm familiar building, with where so. they build it. It's way back there. And that's the only signage that will exist. There isn't any um, street right. level sign, I mean, uh, along Ridgeway. There is one other small sign, just for clarification, on the front building that says something about Wellness Center and an arrow pointing back. On which building? On the f building that fronts onto Ridgeway. So not the building that we're talking about. No, you know, an, an already existing building. That yeah, it's a very, it's a very small sign. It can't be more than three by three. I'm sorry. A directional sign. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Is there anybody in the audience? Well, any other questions? No. Does anybody in the audience wish to speak in favor of the request? Okay. Seeing no one, is there anybody that would wish to speak against the request? Okay. Seeing no one, then I will entertain a motion. If there's no further questions. No question. Everybody no good? All right. I'll make a motion uh, to approve the request by signs by tomorrow for a sign variance to allow for the installation of two 17 square feet wall mounted signs and a 21 square foot wall mounted sign for a total of 55 square feet, 44.4 square feet more than the 10.6 square feet allowed in an R4 multiple family residence district located at 128 Circle, I'm sorry, Plaza Circle, for the following reasons. That there appears to be a lack of reasonable returns to properties, narrow frontage severely limits the ability to provide adequate signage for the agencies located within the new building and denial of the request could deny the owner a reasonable use of the property. Number two, there would appear to be some uniqueness to the request as the new building sits approximately 232 feet south of West Ridgeway Avenue at the dead end of Plaza Circle, severely limiting its visibility to potential clients and the lack of street frontage severely limits the amount of adequate wall signage to effectively direct clients to the various agencies. Number three, the request would not appear to have a negative impact on the area, but would be compatible with surrounding uses and would appear to be a compatible infill development project. And finally, number four, staff has heard no objections to the request. I'll second it. Okay. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, the request passed. Third is a request by Jeff and Luann Woodard for a variance to the accessory structure requirements to allow for construction of a 24 by 24, 500 square foot detached garage with a two, year, two foot rear yard setback, one foot less than the minimum three foot year, rear yard setback required and a one foot side yard setback. 
two foot less than the minimum three foot setback required in an R2 one and two family district located at 1520 East Ridgeway Avenue. Staff report. This is Western with staff. Uh, the applicant is planning to demolish an existing 18 by 22 detached garage and then build a new 24 by 24 garage in approximately the same location as the existing garage that does not meet the side yard or rear yard setbacks. Uh, the property is located at the intersection of 11th Street and Ridgeway Avenue. The site in question is zone R212 family residence district and has been zoned as such since the adoption of the ordinance. Properties to the north, south, east, and west are also zone R2, 1 and 2 family residence district. Uh, the request would not appear to have a negative impact on the area as there has, uh, there has been a, a non-conforming garage on this property since 1951 that uh, has not caused any known issues. Uh, the request would not appear to have a negative impact on traffic conditions in the area as the garage would be used for uh, storage and would be located in the southwest corner of the lot. Uh, the ordinance requires that for any residential use, the minimum side yard and rear yard setbacks for detached structures is three feet from the side and rear property lines and three feet from any other structures such as a house or another accessory structure. Uh, the applicant has an existing garage that was built in 1951 that has a two foot rear yard setback, one foot less than the three foot rear yard setback required and a one foot side yard setback, two feet less than the minimum three feet setback. The applicant is planning to demolish the 18 by 22 detached garage and build a 24 by 24 garage in approximately the same location with the same two foot rear yard setback and one foot side yard setback. Uh, there have been similar requests before the Board of Adjustments in the past that um, in June, 20, uh, June uh, of 2011, there was a Variance at 171 Lovejoy in R1 district. Uh, and there was, there was listed four or five other uh, variances that were granted uh, similar to this request. Uh, criteria, uh, number one, lack of reasonable return. There would not appear to be a lack of reasonable return to the request as the applicant does have the ability to build a new garage and meet the required minimum setbacks. Number two, uniqueness. There would appear to be a uniqueness to the request as there is an existing 16 by 22 detached garage that, that does not meet the side or rear yard setbacks that has existed since 1951 without any known negative effects on the area. Number three, public considerations. Approval of the request could set precedence for other properties within the nearby area to have side yard setbacks within the R2 residence districts of less than three feet. However, there are known, known negative impacts with the existing non-conforming garage that has existed since 1951, and also staff has received no objections to the request. Therefore, our staff recommends that the request by Jeff and Luann Woodard for variance to the accessory structure requirements to allow for the construction of a 24 foot by 24 foot or 576 square feet detached garage with a two foot rear yard setback and one foot less than the minimum three yard setback required and a one foot side yard setback two feet less than the minimum three feet setback required in an R2 one and two family residence district located at 1520 East Ridgeway Avenue be approved for the following reasons. The request would not appear to have a negative impact on the surrounding area. Number two, the request would not appear to have a negative impact on traffic conditions. <coughs> Number three, there would appear to be a uniqueness to the request as there, is a, as there is an existing garage that was built in 1951 that does not meet the side or rear yard setbacks with no known negative effects on the area. And lastly, there have been no objections to the requests. Okay, any questions of staff? I guess I do have one question there. So the driveway, is that what they're trying to say? The direct, well, there is no hard surface to the existing garage, is that correct? There will be. No, there wasn't. Oh, there isn't now, no. Okay, and so they're proposing to come in from the east with the driveway? I believe so, and the applicants are right here. Okay. And they yeah, we'll ask them in a second here. Yep. Now, there'd be a four foot uh, approach on the north side. Yeah, we need to ask your name and. Oh, I'm address. sorry, Jeff Woodward, okay. resident 1520 East Ridgeway. 
Okay, I'm sorry, what did you say then? There, there would be an apron or an approach four foot by 20 foot and on the north side of the garage. So there'll be a separate curb cut to the street? No, 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 this is 50 yards behind the house. I'm sorry? This is this garage is 50 yards behind the house. There's just gonna be a concrete apron and approach just to get up into the garage. Directly in front of the garage? Yes. But not No, there is not gonna be any hard surface to the back of the... No. Okay. So to get there, you'll be driving across your lawn? Yes. It's, it's a storage, what it is for all my lawn and garden equipment. And I'll store my boat in there in the winter time. Is this structure again? Okay, just for clarification, so the lines that are drawn in orange go into the house. I'm sorry, going to the front of the house. That is not accurate. Just those, those lines. That's that's all the existing garage right now in the back. Is the 18 by 22. Yeah, I'm talking about. There's another picture. This one. This one. Yeah, that door door opening faces north, and that's property to the west. So what are these the orange? orange the orange lines are for some water that drains through there on occasion when like the cedar floods real bad. Um, we're not by the river, but when the ground gets saturated. Okay. And one I of my concerns was, was going out too far. I thought it getting, was driveway. No, no. There will be a four foot, a, just a four foot concrete approach to the front of the new structure. Oh. Because you but, have an uh, attached garage. Yes, we have a two stall attached garage where the vehicles are parked. And you're going to, all right, okay. So there's no vehicle traffic to this garage it's strictly for storage it's storage a lawn tractor put my boat in there in the winter time so how do you get the boat out put the lawn tractor and you take it just pull the, it up to the side of the house and how do you access the side of the house which on the we go on, on the, the west, west or the, the east the west side of our house west side. so throw that one all right so we're looking at this picture here and we're standing on Ridgeway looking south? Yes. Correct? Correct. And you will you would travel on, I'm sorry, which side of the house? West. On the right side of your screen. Okay. And your intent is to take the existing structure down. Yes. Make that go away. Totally. And you'd start over. Start from scratch. Okay. This variance, this staff question really fast, is strictly for setback, not for size. Correct. Just for my clarification purposes, if later on he or someone in the future wanted to put a driveway back to this and was going to put it on the east side. I, I kind of looked at the house. I didn't appear there was enough room, and there was a shed in front anyway to go to the west. Would that be allowed, or would they have to come back to the existing curb cut? The engineering department would review that, and being they probably would not allow a second driveway. Okay. Uh, there's a minimum distance between driveways, but it's hundred feet. Okay. So not now or in the future would that happen? I don't see that. No. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Is there anybody here that wishes to speak against the request? Okay. Seeing none, I would um, Entertain a motion. Mr. Chair, I move that the request by Jeff and Juan, Juan, Juan uh, Woodward for a variance to the accessory structure requirement to allow for construction of a 24 by 24, 576 square feet detached garage with a two 
foot year, a rear yard setback, one foot less than minimum, three foot rear yard setback required, and a one foot side yard setback, two foot less than the minimum three feet setback required in an R2, one and two family residence district located at 1520 East Ridgeway Avenue be approved for the following reasons. One, the request would not appear to have a negative impact upon the surrounding area. Number two, the request would not appear to have a negative impact on traffic conditions. Number three, there would, be, there would appear to be a uniqueness to the request as there is an existing garage that was built in 1951 that does not meet the side or rear yard setbacks with no known negative effects to the area. And number four, there have been no objections to the request. Let's tear the old one down. Okay. And number, five. sure, uh, number five, we tear the old one down. Okay. Just to get it in there. So, you, I'm sorry, you added a fifth one? Yeah, they'll tear the old one down, which they, they will. <laughs> they can't. We asked about the first one. But. Okay. I'll second. Okay, any further discussion? Nope. All in favor? Aye. 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 Passed. Good to go. Our fourth request by Joe Miner for a variance to the average front yard setback requirements to allow for the construction of a new home with a 30 foot front yard setback, 17.5 feet past the average setback requirement of 47.5 in an R1, one and two family residence district located on 5045 Mercedes Bend. Staff Mr. report. Just throwing off with staff, the property is located at 5045 Mercedes Benz. The site is currently zoned R1, one and two family residence district. It's been zoned as such since the adoption of ordinance 4471 on April 3rd, 2001. The surrounding properties are also zoned R1, one and two family residence district. The request would not appear to have a negative impact on the neighborhood. The house is closer to the street than the adjoining homes, but is also located next to a 90 degree curve in the road. The request would not appear to have a negative impact on traffic conditions in the area. The proposal request would be in conformance with the classification of this area as low density residential on the future, fam future land use map. The zoning ordinance requires a 30 foot front yard setback in an R1, one and two family residence district. However, ordinance also requires a front yard setback based on the abutting homes or closest thereof on either side within 200 feet. The house on the north side has a 50 foot setback. The house on the southwest is a little difficult to exactly determine to its front yard setback because of it's located on the curve of Mercedes Benz, but is estimated to have a setback of 45 feet, creating an average setback of 47.5 feet. Joe Minard is constructing a single family home on a lot at 50, 45 Mercedes Benz. Um, the applicant was told by stowing staff that a 30-foot setback would be meet the requirements of the zoning code, and the building permit was issued in error because, however, it does not meet the average requirement. There is also an unusual situation that the lot in question has a platted 50-foot backyard setback, which was, which is the only house in the subdivision that has this building setback line. The applicant was the original developer of the subdivision, in case that the Rear building line was done to prevent a home from on the lot to from blocking the view of the pond for homes to the north. The proposed home is being built within a few feet of the rear yard line and could not have been pushed back to meet the front yard setback without extending into the rear building line. Criteria, lack of reasonable return. There would appear to be a lack of reasonable return because of the 50-foot backyard building setback line. Uniqueness, there appears to be uniqueness to the request. As the applicant was told, a 30 foot setback would be adequate, and the building permit was issued in error. That there is a 50 foot rear yard setback that would make it difficult to construct a home on the lot without the variant, and given the curve in Mercedes Bend, making it difficult to calculate an average setback. Public consideration, there would not appear to be a negative impact on the neighborhood. Staff recommends that the variance to, to have the average front yard setback of 30 feet, 17.5 feet less than the required, located at 5045 Mercedes Benz, be approved for the following reasons. 
One, the building will meet the requirements of the R1, 1, and 2 family residence district, along with building setback set by original developer that platted the land. The planning department, two, the planning department told the applicant 30 foot setback would be allowed, signed off on the building permit in error. There, three, there is a 50 foot rear yard setback and makes it difficult to build a home if the full 47.5 foot average setback front yard setback was required. For the property is unique given the curve at Mercedes Benz, making it difficult to calculate an average setback. Okay. I guess the only comment I have is that house to the south. Boy, I didn't think that looks like it has a 47 or 45 foot setback. When I drove by it, I thought it was probably very close to the lot to the front lot line so yeah plus the one property line does curve there also so it makes it kind of difficult to no oh, i know I, yeah. I understand that yeah well I, yeah there it's an odd shaped lot and have there been any objections by surrounding neighbors I mean, other than visual, it would look like the property owner to the immediate north would only be, be the only one that would be really affected by line of sight to the pond. It looks like he's pretty much cut off, but if he hasn't objected, then kind of immaterial to me. Yeah, I know. I received one call from property owner behind there, but all they were concerned about was they weren't concerned about the buildings. They thought it was going to be for a business or something. And it's like, no, it's about the setback line. And they had no concerns about that. Okay. So if, before they got this thing started, to meet the 47 setback and the issue with the 50 foot in the rear, would there have been an adjustment made uh, instead of going 47, help me with this. This is Schrader with staff. Had it been properly identified that an average setback requirement was required along the front, given that and the 50 foot rear building line in the back, the plans as proposed for the lot would not have worked. Uh, the only um, thing possible would have been a complete reconfiguration of a house for that lot. It would have to be um, a significantly, um, you know, less depth house. It potentially could be a, a little bit wider, although it's not a real wide lot. So probably realistically, it would have had to have been a significantly smaller overall footprint house. This is the only thing that would fit on this site without uh, either a variance to the front yard setback or, um, you know, the entire subdivision agreeing to remove the private restriction of the rear setback. But the 50 foot rear setback was a platting yep. decision. It was not a zoning requirement. Cor correct. It was so not the a zoning thing that they would have had to have done was got the plat yeah. revised uh, through all the owners in that subdivision. Cor yeah, correct. It would take uh, act. You know sign off of uh, the owners which would probably be difficult at this point point. and i don't know how big that subdivision is i don't know if there's more than one in there it's probably about 40 lots um, that's just a real rough guess so if the if the front of the house would have gone back say 35 40 feet <coughs> would and then that would have impacted still the rear Yes. 50 foot. I mean, I'm, I'm just trying to figure out whether there was some way to put this thing in there. Yeah. Yeah. They, they're the, the house is currently in place is pretty much right on the 30 foot front yard setback. Mm -hmm. And it's within a foot or two of the 50 foot platted rear setback requirement. So, you know, big house. yeah, if, 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 it, if there was no platted rear setback, it would fit, but still barely because, yeah, you'd be then backed up to that 47 and a half foot mm -hmm. average setback. 
And that would put your back end pretty close to the 30 foot minimum rear yard setback that the zoning ordinance would normally require. Okay. Thank you. But it wouldn't have been a violation of, that we would have had to get involved if he had set it back. If that's what you're thinking. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Correct. It would just been a platting issue. Sure. Which then would have required uh, all input the from all the sign. owners to sign off on. Right. To change the plat. Okay. Any other questions? Is there anybody here that wish to speak in favor of the request? Good afternoon. I'm Mike Young. I live at 215 Pauline Place in Waterloo, and I'm a lawyer for the owners and the applicants here. Um, this is an unfortunate situation with a lot, as we've just been talking about, but in some respects, I think it might be the perfect situation for why we have the Board of Adjustment and we have the variance process um, because this is such a unique property. With the history, we've talked about it, um, the way that the property was platted um, and also the competing ordinance um, with a 30 foot setback and then the average and then being on a curve. So I don't mean to belabor it. We won't go through the report again, but just we would respectfully request the the application and I'm uh, the uh, variance. I'm here to answer any questions too, if you have any. No. Thank you. Okay. Bruce Jacobs, 820 Wendy Road. I request your consideration for approval of this variance. Um, just looking at the lot. They kind of put the house on the best spot they could. It kind of fits in with the neighborhood, especially with the curve. Um, and then also it's unfortunate that they've already begun um, the construction process. So I request your uh, consideration for approval. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Randy Vandersee, um, I'm co-developer out there and uh, also live out there and pretty familiar with the property and the neighborhood. Um, it's in a good spot and I don't think anybody out there really cares, you know, about the setback, you know, being it meets the 30 foot thing and, and that. So I, I'm in favor for it and I own a lot of property out there. So I think it's a good thing. Okay. Thank you. Do you know that? I, I have one. How long has this been put on hold? I mean, when was this discovered? Two weeks. Two oh, weeks? Okay. Two weeks. Yeah. It's a two to three weeks, I think. Okay. I have a question. Is the setback to the front of the garage or the front of the house? Front of the garage. Thank you. The end of the garage. Whatever the furthest protrusion of a wall. Okay. So in this case, that would be the garage. Okay. Hi, Wesley Bro, uh, 3517 Inverness Road. Um, I'm actually the owner of the lot and just kind of wanted to reiterate too that uh, uh, Joe uh, being our, he's actually my wife's grandfather and uh, Joe and, and we took a lot of care in making sure that we were in compliance with where the house needed to be on the lot and um, you know made sure that we got it approved by all the committees that needed to do that, drew up the site plan and everything and tried to put as much detail on there as possible. So. Um, obviously, uh, very discouraging when it came back as, you know, later on as um, requiring a variance. Um, I think as is pretty clear, as far along uh, as we are in the process, it would be, it'd be pretty devastating to our family to have to change it at this point. Um, so again, yeah, just wanted to speak in favor of that and um, share those thoughts. Okay. Thanks. Hold on a second. What's the square footage on this structure? Um, it's just over 2,000 main base. Okay. That's the, 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 to include the garage or not the garage? No. That includes the garage. It does. Okay. Resident, I mean, the, the living area and the garage is to a little over 2,000, you said? Yes, I believe so. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I'm sorry, was there any discussion with the neighbor to the north in regards to, did they have any concerns about this? 
they seem to be the only one that would really be impacted by it. Right. Um, I haven't personally had any discussions with them about it, and they haven't reached out to me. Um, and I haven't heard of any discussions uh, from them specifically either. Okay. So, and I did want to note that, you know, I think part of having this lot have that 50 foot setback in the back was really, you know, partly for their benefit as well to be able to maintain that view down um, track day down to the pond and, you know, to, to preserve that view um, is why that setback was put there in the first place. So um, it's, you know, it does kind of maybe obscure their view more in the front, but really in the back, I, I would think is more where the concern would be with preserving the view. Okay. So, thank you. Thanks. Any other questions? Can I add one oh, more I'm sorry. Thing? I just wanted to reiterate, if I were the guy in the north of that house, I would really appreciate where it sits right now because the back, all their living space is in the back off their deck and that, and it's wide open and they got the best view with where it's at. So I think, you know, if that were me there, I would really appreciate where it sits because, you know, they hang out in their backyard, not their driveway, you know. So anyway. Okay. Are you talking about this house to the north? This one? This is where they're, this is yeah, the new right, house. You're talking right about this one? Yeah. It's way, it cuts it off quite a bit. Yeah, this house, and the new one's out, you know, right. 20 feet past right. the front. Well, but if they, much, I mean, if he's talking the, about the view off that back, straight down to the pond. Not from the front. No, well, he can't, he's, he, he can't see this. the pond now. Right. Yeah. He has a view of the pond between these houses here. Yeah, he might have a little bit of view there. But yeah, they're talk, the view they're talking about is off that back. All right. Straight there. All right. Okay. Does anybody wish to speak in uh, against the request? Okay. Seeing none, if there's no other questions, I'd entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to request uh, the variance to the average front yard setback requirement to allow for the construction of a new home with a 30 foot front yard setback, 17.5 feet less than the average setback requirement of 47.5 feet at 5045 Mercedes Benz in Waterloo for the following reasons. Uh, the building will be uh, will meet the requirements of the R1, one and two family residence district along with the building setback set by the original developer that platted the land. Number two, the planning department told the applicant that a 30 foot setback would be allowed and signed off on the building permit in error. Number three, there is a 50 foot rear yard setback that makes it difficult to build a home if the full 47.5 foot average front yard setback was required. Number four, the property is unique given the curve at Mercedes Benz, making it difficult to calculate an average setback. Get approved, right? I, yes, approved. Oh. Yeah, I don't think you said the word approval. Yeah, I skipped it. Okay. A couple times. <laughs> <laughs> then approved. Second. Yeah. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. It's been approved. Thank you. Any further discussions, items? Just glad to see more people are building new homes in Waterloo. I like there's three of them going out there, so that's good, I think. I'll be having Two mine or three. there in May. Sorry, what? We're getting them help built. But we don't Any know. motion for adjournment? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.